What we're going to be doing in this video is seeing how we can replicate the functionality of the background object from the standard or physical render in Redshift. Now, if you're not familiar with the background object, it's what allows us to create a simple background using a material um, in Cinema 4D. And this material can then use any of the available nodes we have to us in Redshift, whether that's images, noises, gradients, tiles, or anything else. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's see how we can create or recreate really kind of the background object setup that we used to be able to use in Cinema 4D. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, before Cinema 4D used to default to a Redshift, it used to default to the standard render. And we had some other objects that we no longer can use in Redshift, one of which is the background object. And what was nice about this is it was a convenient way to add a background to our projects directly in Cinema 4D. And really where the power of this came from was that we could use a material is our background and load any type of textures, images, noises, gradients, and use that as our background. Now, ultimately, we might be better off do, doing a background in After Effects or Photoshop or wherever you're compositing um, your project in. Um, but there are times where you just want to add something simple, something quick and easy, and that's where the background project background object really shine. I should also mention that in your Redshift camera, um, in the background section here, if all you need is a color or the ability to load in an image, this will do that just fine. So those are your different options if you want to um, keep it simple. But if you want to use a material and be able to create something use the nodes, using the nodes available to us in the node editor, then um, what we're going to be seeing today um, should help with that. So the main part of this is going to be to create a plane and then rotate this plane. Now, ultimately the rotation doesn't matter um, as much as the fact that the plane fills our field of view and is behind all of our geometry. So I'm gonna double check just to make sure this was rotated 90 degrees just to be on the safe side. And we want this behind all of our geometry. You can see it's kind of intersecting it, okay? Because if we were to render this right now, what we'd see is that uh, there's a whole bunch of different things happening to our plane here. It's receiving shadows, it's getting lights, it's also influencing the reflections um, on our other elements since light is bouncing off of it. Okay, so we wanna move this back and I'll just move it back this far for right now um, because I want to be able to show you what happens as we kind of go through and do this. So the next step to, to change that our background is interacting with reflections and lights is to add the redshift object tag and in the visibility section we're going to check override and we want to uncheck secondary ray visible that will get rid of a lot of the reflections and refractions as well as the global illumination right notice how when i turn that back on you can see things brighten up because light is being bounced from behind this um, back onto our um, you know tools here maybe even reflecting it as well so we can turn off that back off. Now, what we're still getting though, is some lighting applied to our plane. So you can see we have some shadows, we have some light there. And so you can start to fix that by unchecking cast shadows, receive shadows, self shadows, all of that stuff. But we're still going to have the light here. And so the final way of kind of getting our plane to be ignored by everything is to go through and in the project tab, make sure that all of our lights are excluding the plane. And as we do this, you'll see our plane gets progressively darker. And that's how you know it's working because when our plane is being ignored by all the lights, when it's being ignored by reflections, refractions, shadows, global illumination, there's nothing left. And so that's what we want to see. Now what we can do is create our material and apply this and nothing should change when we do that. We can open up this material and dock our node editor here. Okay, move this off to the side. I'm gonna get rid of this redundant um, pane there. And what we can do is maybe start by just creating a tiles node and plugging that in. Now, really the only place we need to plug this in is to the emission section, all right? In fact, we could just connect this directly to the surface output and that will give us kind of our end result here, right? But we can go through the material, it, you know, if we really want to, it's not gonna make much of a difference. So let's connect the out color back to the surface and that should get rid of that error. It's still 
Not there though, because we haven't turned on emission. So I'm gonna scroll down to my material properties, find emission, make sure I set that weight, something like two, one, you know, whatever. And you can kind of see what it would take to replace that. It looks like one actually will give us the best results. So that's what I'll keep this at. Now, at this point though, what you may notice with our background is it's, you know, just like an ordinary plane in terms of the texture, how it's, you know, projected on there. And yeah, when we're looking through this, you can see, you know, how it's distorted because it's applied to a background plane and, you know, we have our camera in there. Well, another part of getting this to work is in the material tag, switching the projection from UVW mapping, like, you know, plenty of other objects in our scene. We want frontal. And that will make sure our background, um, our material gets projected straight on to our plane now, okay? And so this is gonna look a little bit strange now when we try and rotate this, because you'll notice that the material or texture on our plane does not change, okay? And so that's kind of what we want to see, is now it makes it look like we have a flat background behind everything. Okay, I should also point out here that, you know, if you wanted to take this further, getting the plane to match the angle of your camera could actually be beneficial. You know, whether that's using, say, um, a target tag uh, or whether it's using in rigging, I think you could do it with the constraint um, tag. I think there's like an aim constraint or something like that. That could probably work. Um, that way, you know, our plane is always facing the camera and that could be useful Ooh, that's kind of fun. Um, that could be useful if our camera was animated. All right. Kind of the way around this would be to either make the plane a child of the camera. So that way, as the camera moves, the, the plane stays with it. Or to just make the plane large enough so that that's, you know, a non-issue. Now, I'm not 100% sure what's causing that. I suspect it might be our projection here. Let's see if that's the case. No? That's awfully strange. Um, so I think I only have one plane there. Yep. So probably just getting a little bit of weirdness from everything I'm doing. Maybe it's the excluding, who knows? I don't think it's going to affect anything um, in our end result. So back to our background here, we can make some adjustments um, to this, right? That's the whole point is that, you know, we can use whatever nodes we want here. So maybe instead of the squares pattern, um, I want to use hexagons, all right? And maybe I want the grout width to be smaller along with the bevel width smaller, okay? Maybe I want all these colors to be white for the tiles while the grout still stays dark. Maybe I want to combine this with another node such as a ramp, okay? Now the ramp is a bit of an odd one in that it doesn't seem to really respect um, our our output size here and i'll show you what i mean by that but um you know I, I don't know if it has something to do with the mapping here or, or whatnot but you know we can see as well let's switch this back to frontal first of all you can see our ramp don't need that quite as high up there maybe something like that great i'm going to set this to my favorite blue maybe you've seen it before all right but what i mean by this is you know this ramp here works pretty good it's staying you know vertical and, and not being kind of it's still pe being projected the correct way but if you switch this to say circular um it doesn't seem to be working 100 correctly i'm going to try flipping these colors here but you'll notice how it seems to go beyond um my view here which to me doesn't make sense for the frontal projection. Now, um, we may see if we were to render this that it does do something differently while rendering. I guess we could have just turned on bucket mode to see if that was gonna be the case. All right, now I'm getting this trace set error. If you ever see that, typically that's due to light linking. So when you kind of uh, set something up here in the project window, exclude include type stuff. Okay, so I mean, I guess that looks the same. 
Um, it's not terrible, but it would be nice to be able to have that full rounded gradient there um, and have it fit, you know, kind of our screen. But that looks OK. Um, but then, you know, because we are working with a material here, um, you know, we could mix these two together. So I could end up with a color mix and connect that to a mission. Connect this to oops, getting a little bit too click happy there. Connect this to input one, and actually this as our mix amount. All right, now to actually see this, I can turn off bucket mode. I'm getting those real updates, great. I think I kind of have this backwards, but let's see what happens when this input is black. Yep, so we're only seeing our texture, I'm sorry, our ramp where um, the grout width is. And so all I have to do is switch that and then make sure input one is black and there we go now we're getting a combination of both of these nodes mixed together in one as our background so that's ultimately all there is to this you know create a plane make sure it's behind your geometry far enough away to where it's not going to intersect anything set up your redshift object tag by unclicking secondary ray visible as well as your shadow options um, and if necessary exclude it from the lights in your scene create a material the important thing with the material is to make sure the projection is set to frontal since um, that's what's going to allow us to project straight onto this um, geometry and not have it be distorted um, and and work for what we're trying to accomplish and so with that that will do it for this one if there's anything else you would like to see please leave me a comment down below and if you found this video helpful or informative i'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to the channel until next time take care